We want some more. <laughs> Hi guys! Thanks for watching last week's tutorial. This week, my dog has a problem. It's winter. It's cold. It is. And um, yeah, I brought them around the neighborhood and in the last week they've been super obsessed with rock salt. So I decided that I think it's time for boots. So before I had a reservation about dogs wearing boots, but since I see how my dog suffers, I can see why people buy them for them. So this week I'm going to show you how to make a sweater and six boots for your four-legged friend. Yes, six boots because you're going to lose at least one or two with time. So um, here goes. Now to measure your dog, the best way to go is probably to put him on a table. That way he really feels like he can't escape. So therefore he uh, basically submits. So this is pretty much the only math equation. Uh, these measurements here are from my dog, so you just have to reinterpret it into your own. This may look a little scary to some, but making your own patterns from scratch is actually pretty great when you learn how to do it because you get so much creative freedom after that. Um, after a couple of times, you'll notice it gets a lot easier. Not all patterns are meant to fit on the first try on, so don't get too frustrated too fast. You just gotta make peace with the fact that there's just readjustments to be made. I'm really sorry about my mistake. So for the sleeve, I put one side higher for the back of his shoulder and obviously the smaller pieces for the front of his shoulder. And now I say cut your pattern with a piece of fabric you don't care about. That way you get to fit it on the dog to see if the pattern works. And luckily for this one, it actually worked on the first try, which that's sometimes rare. Um, oh, and bribe your dog as much as you can. He'll love it. So this is a sweater I'm going to use to make his sweater. You cut off all the borders and basically what you're going to do, you're going to later attach them to the ends of his sweater so it makes a really much better finish. And make sure to align like patterns together like for the front and back side. So assemble your sweater together and put the border onto the sleeve before you totally assemble the sleeve together. Zoom, 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 zoom. And there you go. You got a sleeve. So pin the sleeve. Sew the sleeve. Here's the sleeve. There's Steve. Now I noticed at the back that it needed to be taken in and what I recommend is to take it in in an angle right here. And his wiener was touching the sweater so you don't want him to be peeing on the sweater. So you basically now make the borders for the bottom. 
It won't look perfect right away, but later on we'll be steaming this and it'll look perfect. Now for the collar, as you can see, adjust it onto his neck first before you attach it onto the sweater because the neck will the neck of the sweater is usually just much too big. And here, as you can see, I folded it in and hemmed the, the borders. And now for the steam. Place a wet cloth. Look at that. So you just steam every single border and it'll look all together and here it is, your beautiful sweater. So just outline the circumference of his foot and just make the circle a little bigger and just a lot more rounder as much as you can. And again here, as you see how my pattern making is, it ain't pretty, it ain't always precise, but hey, that's how I roll. I put it at a longer length, just to note. And uh, this fabric is the inside fabric. It's a nice, thick cotton fleece. And here I cut six for six boots. And this is the outer fabric. This is great because it was like basically waterproof and very grippy. Now this next part is a little confusing because you can't see what's going on. But basically you just put the wrong sides back to back and pin them so then you'll have the fleece, the good part of the fleece inside the boot and the good fabric outside the back. And then you pin the two pieces together again. It's a lot of pinning but when you're sewing it at least they won't shift around because trust me it will. So there you go, they're all pinned and ready to be sewn. So option one, you can use your sewing machine. You basically make a zigzag at the edges. And I know for some people that's a little too complicated. So option two, just sew it by hand. And realistically, out of the two, I like sewing it by hand. It's a lot more sturdier, I've noticed. And here I just took Steve's length of his paw and now I just cut it off. And then here I folded it twice. So then do your first fitting. As you can see, your dog at some point will hate you. And I think this is the point where he really hated me. And then you sew up the borders. And next, elastic time. You can use Velcro, but I honestly find elastic a lot better. So you just fold it in two and sew it on one side. And there you go, boots. Now it's time to dress up puppy. So if you like my videos, you can subscribe to this channel. You can also like this clip if you really did, and um, it'll be always appreciated. Uh, if you have some questions, because I know there was a lot more detail in this one today, um, yeah, ask me questions, I'll answer them pretty fairly fast. And if you want to know more about what I do, I have it a blog spot, which is www.wowcreations.blogspot.com. And uh, there you'll be able to see photo albums of my past work. I've been doing this whole crafting thing for like the last four years, but Wow as a business has been around for six. So uh, if you want to learn more, just click on the link below. So yeah, I'll see you guys next week.